so your music production thing is started to get serious. You already have your favorite plugins, maybe you even have some MIDI controllers, and you started to wonder, should I buy an analog synth? You started to watch videos about Moog, maybe Buchla modulars, those new Arturia synths, and you saw their price. And then you started to think, huh, do those analog synths really have a sound better than the plugins? Or if I had all those knobs, would my workflow get better, get faster? So in this video, I'm not going to discuss if analog is better than the plugins or plugins are better than analog, but showing you that building your own MIDI controller can be more than enough, but only paying a fraction of what you'd pay for an analog synth. So let's get it started. So if you're new to the channel, my name is Gustavo Silveira, and here I teach people how to build MIDI controllers. I also have you a lot of nice gear too. And today I want to show you how my workflow looks like so I can play my DIY MIDI controllers just like I was playing a true analog synth. Today I want to show you an example of me using my Mini Moog clone. So of course this is not an actual analog synthesizer, it's a MIDI controller I built with the panel just like the Mini Moog app. This way I can control the Mini Moog app or any other synth plugin. So let me show you how I do so I have the fastest workflow possible. So I open Ableton Live and everything is ready for me to play, my keyboard, all the parameters mapped automatically. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so here we are in Ableton Live and what I want to have is a setup that when I open my live set, I can choose between instruments and can I already uh, use my controllers to change whatever parameter that I want to map or that I want to be mapped to. So here we have three MIDI controllers. This one is the Nectar Impact GX49. I already made a review. This is the Chic N32B, which is a DIY kit that Chico sent me and I assembled this in the channel too. You can check the video too. And this is the MIDI Mood, which is a MIDI controller I made based on the MIDI Moog synth. And what I want to have is that when I open a live set, I can play my keyboard and change the instruments without having to map everything every time I open a live set. Because I know that's a huge problem about using MIDI controllers. You always have to map everything every time we start a new project. So what can we do in live to make this as fast as possible? So there are different ways of achieving the same thing. So be aware there is no script that can map everything in your DIY controller to every single parameter in your plugin automatically. This is really hard to do and I don't think that's possible. But what I want to create today is a template where you have your plugins loaded with all the mappings ready to use. What I want to show you might be a little obvious for some, but it can be quite game changing for others. So let's open our plugins of choice. I will start, of course, with the Mini V3, which is the Mini Moog emulation. And let's start mapping. So I press Command M and I'm going to map every single parameter to all the knobs that I have available here in my controller. And you can see here that I even have all the labels exactly in the same way of the plugin. Here I have Glide, Tune, and Mod Mix. Here is Range, even the waveforms. Okay, so my mapping is all done. So I press Command M again. And then you can see that I have, oops, I can see that I did something wrong here. And yeah, test all your knobs to see if everything is mapped correctly. Even the toggle switches here I can use in my controller. Thank you. 
And okay, you have your first synth mapped. So what you want to do is do the same thing for other synths you use. But first, what I want to do is creating a group. Click here in the plugin and press Command G and press here in chain. Okay, so now here you have your mini V in this chain and then you can add another plugin. So let's add the tall noise maker, which is a great free synth. We can press solo here to change between instruments, but there's another way I'm gonna show you later. Okay, so we can start mapping this, but you see that we don't have everything the same here. For example, I don't have an LFO, and here I have phase, PW, so it's a little bit different. So you can, you're gonna have to start to use your imagination and improvise a little bit and use in the as close as you can to the plugin. Okay, so let's see how it sounds. Okay, so now we can map as many plugins as we want. I'm gonna just map another one, which is the Diva. I'm gonna do the same thing. And I really love the Diva, it's a great synth and also has a mini Moog emulation, which is this one you are seeing right now. And there are different ways of choosing between instruments and I'm going to show you one that I'm doing. So come here to your instrument rack and click here in chain. You can see that you can move this, so wherever this blue line, which is the chain selector, is on top of the blue line, that instrument will be selected. So now we have the Diva, we have the Mini and the Tone Noise because probably there's something off there in the controllers which is not making any sound, but it's on. And a way of using this in an easy way is that take your first instrument and put here in the one, your second instrument here in the two, in your third instrument here in the three. Then come to your clips, create a dummy clip. I like to start here in the second. Double click in your dummy clip and come here and click in instrument rack and in instrument rack choose chain selector. Click, just click in the line and make sure you have a dot and then you can drag this dot to whatever number your chain is set to. So every time you press this clip, this chain will be selected. But also we don't want to loop this, so you can click here in loop and also in launch, you don't want to quantize. So launch, um, quantize we set to none. Also come here, command R and name your clip. Okay, so now we're gonna copy this and paste here. So let's change the name this to. And here we're gonna come to the same place envelopes, instrument rack, chain selector, but now we're gonna select the chain that's set to, which is two. And let's make the same thing for the Diva. And let's set this to three. And what we can do now is we can map this uh, to keys. For example, the mini, I can press M in my keyboard, tall, I can press T, and Diva, I can press D. So, okay, so now I pressed M. And D, 
I have my... I also have to turn off this, otherwise I'm gonna hear notes, because you can play this with your uh, keyboard from your computer. And of course, you can add other instruments. I changed the name here, so it's better to map with numbers. It's okay, I can have my synth here. And even my piano. And of course we can have audio effects. So I can have, for example, an auto filter. And this I'm gonna add in another rack. Auto pan, saturator, chorus. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to press shift in the first and in the last one, I'm going to press command G. And I'm going to click here so I can see, sorry, here. So I can see my macros, so I can add those knobs to macros as shortcuts. So I'm going to add this to macro one, I'm going to add auto pen to macro two, the amount and rate to macro three, then let's map rate of the chorus and amount and now I'm going to map those parameters here to my Chic controller. I'm gonna map them in channel two. And of course, I'm going to map some reverb and delay. Okay, so the last thing I want to do is save this as a template. So we come here to file, save live set as template. So you can call it keys, for example. You can name this keys. And every time you come back to this project, you can change it and save as a template and you can override your project. And you can open a blank project. You don't even need to save. And then come to templates. It can be here also in user library, but here in templates. And here we have our keys template that we just did. So now if we play, we don't have anything because we have, we are hearing none, but. So now every time we open this template, we're gonna get our instruments just like we were playing an analog synth. Thank you. 
And you wanna know the best part? This MIDI controller here only cost me around $40 at the time. Uh, maybe now it's gonna cost like 50 or 60. It really depends on where each country, the quality of the components, the materials of the enclosure. But the brain, which is the Arduino, usually costs around $5 if you buy it on AliExpress. So do you really need an analog synth? I know I would like to have one, but do we really need one? or a DIY MIDI controller tailored to what you need plus a live template is more than enough. Tell me in the comments below. So if you want to learn how to build this or any kind of MIDI controller, please check my Nerd Musician Pro course here in the description. There I teach you how to copy and paste my projects or how you can build from scratch only adapting some numbers in my code in a really simple way. You really don't need any experience in electronics or programming. So check the link here below. See you in the next video.